So hello everyone, I'm Dr. Saurabh Dixit and today I have got a very interesting small case discussion for you. So as we have seen the recent trend in exams that there are a lot of questions from GIT, even when we talk about super speciality, when we talk about the NEET PG or even FMG exams, you get a lot of questions from that. So one very important less known topic which is very important for super speciality, important for NEET PG and INICT and to some extent yeah a topic to go through for even the students who are going to appear for this FMG exam and what is that topic so that topic is appendicular tumors so when we talk about GIT GIT per se is huge it's vast but yes it's very interesting and today I have brought such, a, such an interesting topic the name of the topic is appendicular tumors so when we talk about the tumors of appendix or appendicular tumors it's very important for you to understand that what is a classical the most commonly seen tumor of the appendix and the answer is that the neuroendocrine tumor so when we talk about the most common tumors the most common tumors of the appendix they are the semi malignant or pre malignant lesions and they are basically the carcinoids when you talk about the carcinoids they are nothing but specialized neuroendocrine tumors arising from entrocoma fin cells or kalshetsky cells of the git so this is what is a very simple thing that we know. The second most common could be adenocea. Now when we talk about the appendicitis and appendix, they are very commonly address phenomena. And when we are doing appendix, appendicectomy, uh, so many a times you might notice a tumor like you can say formation in that appendix. So what should you do if you diagnose something after the surgery when the biopsy results are there? And what should you do when you diagnose something during you can say uh, when you are when you are you, when you are doing the surgery and you detect a topic so let us talk about those things let us discuss them and they are very 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 interesting things to know let us understand this so the first thing that we are going to talk about is whenever we talk about approach to appendicular tumors so let us understand approach to appendicular tumors now this is where the things start the first question that you need to answer to yourself is when have you detected it so the next question is when has it been detected so has it been detected yes of course it has been detected that is why we are talking about so when it has been detected answer could be yes it is detected during surgery during surgery or it could be detected post surgery so when you talk about post surgery how will you detect it answer is on biopsy because every specimen you send it for histopath so on histopathology you get to know that it's a tumor or suppose when you're talking about during surgery how should we approach the very 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 next question should be where is it and what is the size so the next thing is the size if the size of the tumor is found to be more than two centimeter if it is found to be more than 2 cm, the next thing is you have to go for right hemicolectomy. So this is the rule that if you suspect appendicular tumor during surgery and the size is more than 2, you have to go for right hemicolectomy. Now if the size is less than equal to 2 cm, now this is a trouble. What to do now? It's looking like a tumor, but should we go for appendicectomy or right hemicolectomy? Now the very next question that you need to ask to yourself is, is base involved? So is the base involved? The answer could be either yes or it could be no. So if the answer to this question is yes, the base is involved. That means you have to treat it with what? Right hemicolectomy. So I'm using the word this and I'm writing it like right hemicx now if it is less than two centimeters if the base is involved this is right hemicolectomy if it is less than two centimeter if the base is not involved so no the base is not involved so the next thing is you need to check whether or no there is any perforation so the next question is is there any perforation is there any perforation because you know appendix tend to gangrene uh, undergo a gangrenous evolution very very commonly the answer could be no there is no perforation so the base is not involved the size is less than 2 centimeter the 
there is no perforation what to do in that case in that case you have to manage this patient with what students appendicectomy you have to go for appendicectomy jolly well you can continue with laparoscopic appendicectomy if there is perforation the next question is okay i understand this perforation so is there any spillage the next thing is is there any spillage the answer to this question could be no there is no spillage so there is perforation but there is no spillage so the next thing is that you need to do is appendicectomy now if there is perforation if there is spillage if the answer to this question is yes the next question that you have to again recheck with yourself is that is it mucinous spillage is it mucinous spillage because there is something which is known as mucinous adenosia which is going to cause what pseudomyxoma peritonei jelly belly disease and then you need to understand that peritonei uh, peritoneum carcinomatosis index pci so that i will cover in different part so mucinous spillage so when we are talking about mucinous spillage this is what is very important so the answer could be no there is no mucinous spillage so there is perforation but spillage is not mucinous there could be a periappendicular abscess or serous secretion in that case you have to go for appendicectomy now if there is perforation there is mucinous spillage so yes now this is going in favor of what students pseudomyxoma peritonei now when we talk about pseudomyxoma peritonei now this is due to the most common cause of it could be appendicular tumors in females it could be mucinous cyst adenosia the next thing that you need to understand is that there are two aspect of this condition one is what you can see one is what you cannot see so we need dual clearance and what are these dual clearance we need a macroscopic clearance also and we need a microscopic clearance also so that is why we come up with an option which is known as crs what is crs students cyto reductive surgery cyto reductive surgery when we talk about cyto reductive surgery what do we mean by this remove as much as tumor tissue that you can see remove the organ that you can remove if it is involved so that is m you can say n block tumorectomy so the aim of this surgery is to achieve macroscopic clearance and this is what is very 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 important so if there is tumor involvement yeah all the macroscopic tumor we are going to remove it the very next thing is okay sir after crs what are you going to do this is followed with hypec now what do you mean by hypec hypec is hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy now what is the concept of this hypec it's very 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 simple so hyperthermic intraperitoneal intraperitoneal chemotherapy some students could have said sir i would give the chemotherapy by iv route also <clears throat> now try to understand where are these tumor tissue sticking answer is on the serosa so suppose this is an organ and this is the tumor sticking everywhere to the small intestine to the large intestine now if you give something by iv route it will be distributed first the quantity of the chemotherapeutic agent reaching that site would be less and then the amount of the drug that would be able to cross serosa and interact with these would be less and that is why iv chemotherapy doesn't hold any importance so what we do we put the chemotherapy directly into the peritoneal cavity so what will happen there will be direct serosal interaction direct serosal interaction the second thing is hyperthermia so when we talk about hyperthermia it is not like we will pour the chemotherapy uh, therapeutic agent at 40, uh, at 100 degree celsius it is at 42 degree celsius the absorbability the efficacy of the chemotherapeutic drug is increased the second is increasing the temperature shuts down the oxidative cycles makes an anaerobic environment in the tumor tissues and hence they are more ischemic and more readily destroyed this is again very important thing so these are the pros of the hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy now you'll say what so then every chemotherapy will be giving hyperthermic the answer is that the efficacy is increased but the toxicity also is a collateral damage which is concern now what is the best drug that can be absorbed there are two three agents which are readily absorbed from the serosa and one of them is mitomycin c another one is what the doxorubicin so 42 degree celsius 
we used to give 30 to 45 degree you can say uh, 45 minute session so 30 to 45 minute session it may be single or it may be multiple and then in certain cases it might be extended even up to 120 minutes so when we talk about the agents what are the classical agents one is mitomycin c so mitomycin c one is doxorubicin now one very important thing is then why hypec the hypec is going to aim the aim of hypec is microscopic clearance so we have seen macroscopic clearance now we are talking about microscopic clearance a lot more about hypec there is something which is known as pipec so what is pipec it is pressurized interperitoneal uh, in, interperitoneal chemotherapy so what is the concept of this pipec it is again very 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 important so just like we use aerosolize you can say we want to use endoglue so when you are doing laparoscopic surgery we want to stick the mesh or we want to end use endoglue you can check out my series of uh, series on endoglue in my youtube there's a there's a dedicated video so there i have shown you a system which is known as duplo spray jet duplo spray jet is a minimal invasive spray jet system where you can spray anything so it's just like throwing the pesticides on the crop so same way like fertilizers are being spread you can put you can make a port and you can insert a, you can say spray system and you can attach the gas and you can attach the agent so you are just sprinkling the chemotherapy just like NACT new adjuvant chemotherapy so that is nothing but pressurized pressurized intraperitoneal intraperitoneal chemotherapy so this is again one version of the hypec so hypec and pipec there are two things the next is the next is so this is about the concept of you can say tumor management if it is detected during what students surgery remember if you have a mucinous pillage always and always the first thing is to do an open not a laparoscopic surgery now suppose if it is detected post you can say post surgery on biopsy now this is again very important so if it is detected post surgery on biopsy the next thing is what is the diagnosis so what diagnosis are you talking about now in this diagnosis it could be adeno ca so if it is adeno ca the very next thing that you have to take a call is on right hemicolectomy so right hemicolectomy is the call now suppose if it is found to be neuroendocrine tumor that is that means i'm talking about the carcinoids you know the size the side the mitotic index all are very 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 important things in decision making so here now the size is very important because site is not going to change its appendix the site is very important and suppose if the size is found to be more than 2 cm the next thing the next call that you have to take is right hemicolectomy suppose if the size is found to be less than 1 cm what is the next thing that you are going to do students you are going to do observation everything is now under control 6 monthly to 1 year CT MRI abdomen now if the size is 1 to 2 centimeter now this is a zone where you are actually in a 50 50 scenario so here you will check for any lymphovascular invasion this is what is very 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 important so the lymphovascular invasion according this according to the size criteria there is one more thing the mitotic grade if there is a mitotic grade is high so lymphovascular invasion or if the mitotic grade is low so if there is no lymphovascular invasion and mitotic grade is low then you will go for what observation if the lymphovascular invasion is present or if the mitotic grade is very high in that case you have to take a call for right hemicolectomy so students in nutshell i would revise it again for you whenever you have an appendicular tumor detected after surgery and biopsy if it is adeno you will have to take a call for right hemicolectomy if it is neuroendocrine tumor size is of paramount importance less than one you don't have to do anything except for 6 to 12 monthly ct or mri follow-up of abdomen if it is more than two right hemicolectomy less than two but more than one one to two centimeter you'll have to check if there is any evidence of lymphovascular invasion or if the mitotic count is low if it is mitotic count is low no lymphovascular invasion observation if it is not you have to go for surgery again i would revise if it is detected during surgery you see an appendicular tumor like phenomena size more than two go for right hemicolectomy less than two check for the base if the base is involved right hemicolectomy 
if the base is not involved the size is less than 2 check for the perforation if no perforation size is less than 2 base is not involved appendicectomy if less than 2 base is not involved perforation is there check for any spillage if there is spillage this is different if there is no spillage the size is 2 there is perforation base is not involved appendicectomy if the size is less than 2 perforation is there the spillage is there you need to check whether it's mucinous or no. If it is not mucinous, appendicectomy. If it is mucinous, now convert it into open surgery now. You have to plan a classical, classical CRS. What is CRS? Cytoreductive surgery. So I hope students, you enjoyed my small crisp concept. And I'm going to launch my super specialty course very soon. I know I have delayed this for a long time. Uh, but now my uh, app is going to launch by the name of Surgery Dada. So that is a course only for the residents, the surgery residents who want to actually learn the steps of the surgery. They want to have a crisp detailed knowledge of the subject of the surgery and they, 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 they want to also prepare for super specialty. So very soon, I think on 1st of uh, July, it will be long, launched. I would be starting some live classes on that. I would be taking the live, uh, uh, you can say rapid crash course for their super specialty exam that is going to be held in September and along with that you will just enjoy a lot of you can say my personal surgery content the surgery related videos and lot more extended Q bank for your super specialty preparation and you will be actually enjoying that apart from that those who are preparing for NEET they can take my lectures on Allen Next and Allen Next is a wonderful platform I have recorded all my lectures and along with that we have offline in Delhi in Hyderabad we are launching in Chennai also we are launching but Bangalore and Delhi centers we have already started with the offline classes so do watch uh, my videos on Allen Next you can download it on the Android and iOS and uh, you can take my live classes also offline classes in delhi and bangalore so i hope you enjoyed do subscribe to my channel if you have still not subscribed and share this video with your near and dear ones so that you can also benefit and they can also benefit till then bye bye